the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If he have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. 21. How bath this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. This is a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying... Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, uh, Sister... Sister Blake, at this time we are going to have greetings from Sister Roach and then from Reverend Green. And so we'll go in that order at this time. Just welcome this champion stalwart, come on, of the faith as she comes to bring greetings. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give God thanks. Bishop Darren Laman and all the ministers of the gospel on the platform. Let me go again. <laughs> Bishop Darren Lawman, all the pastors and ministers of the gospel on the platform, all my brethren in the congregation and friends, I come this morning to say just a few words as we celebrate this conference year. I give God thanks that I can stand here and greet you from the depths of my heart. It's because of God's grace and his mercy why I'm standing here. And I give him all the praise. We've come thus far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. What could we do without him? I stand and I tell God thanks. We have come a long way. As United Brethren in Christ, we have come a long way, but all the way God has been with us, and we thank him. There are times when we look around, and we could say, we have some regrets. We have a few regrets. We have a few disappointments. But we'll come over those. We are in a new era. New things are happening. And we have to move up with the time. Yes. 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 God has been with us all these years. Mighty, mighty long way. But we're not going to dwell on the past. Put those behind. 
And let's move forward. You know, there was a time when we sing a song said, we are united in Jesus Christ. We are the soldiers of the Christ. The cross. We are mighty. The song ended by saying we are mighty. We are moving forward. We are moving forward. United. United. In Christ. To expand. Put our efforts together. To expand. The work of the United Brethren in Christ. Emphasis on united. Yes. The emphasis is on united. Yes. Because if we divide, we can't go anywhere. So we must be united to go forward. So as we look forward to expand the work of the United Brethren in Christ, with God, with God. Yes. With God. Yes. Because he's the one who takes us from 1945 to, to where we are, 2024. Yes. So let us bind hearts and hearts together as we go forward and expand the work of the United Brethren in Christ, Jamaica Conference. So we go forward. Let me wish you all a very pleasant day as we gathered at the feet of Jesus to be ministered unto and to be challenged in this tremendous work of building the kingdom of God. This is not United Brethren work. It's the work of the kingdom. You know, sometimes we miss a vision we should have had and think it's man's work. This is God's work. And he needs worker today more than any other time. So I challenge you that after we leave this conference today, we go back to our several districts and our several churches to really build the kingdom of God through the ministry of the United Brethren in Christ Church. Amen? I, I'm here today and I want to also bring greetings on behalf of our former Chairman, Superintendent of the conference, Reverend Lloyd Spencer. When I saw him two weeks ago, just before I came back, he's not doing too well in health. And we want to pray for him. You see, my brothers and sisters, we must not despise the days 
a small beginning. We reap where these men sow. They built in order that we have what we have. And so I just want us to remember those of us who don't really live here but belong here. <laughs> yeah? I don't live here but I belong here. It was my privilege to have served the Church of the United Brethren in Christ for over 40 years. And I have served in almost every area of the church. The only area that I didn't serve in is being a bishop. Eh? I was there when we started our first camp at Ocean View Bible Camp. And then we built our own camp site at Malvern. And those of you who knew me then at camp, you know you had a name for me. <laughs> Do I? Yeah, you know. HC. <laughs> HMJC. You know what that stands for? Edmund Dranko. Yeah, but we had good times, great times, tremendous times. And all them people who used to give me trouble. And I said, no, 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 call nobody name. Them know who them be. Good to see them today. Leading the church of the United Brethren in Christ. And it says then my labor was not in vain. You see, most of them think I'm a very serious disciplinarian. You don't work with me. Right, sir? No, you don't work with me. Right, sir? Yeah, you don't work with me. But we need business is business. Volleyball is volleyball. Class is class. Doing the dishes is doing the dishes. Keeping the dorm clean is keeping the dorm clean. It's all for the benefit. Okay. You know, I've had some real moments. When I graduated from Bible school in 1963, they sent me to spoil it where we had a work then. And then something happened in Craighead. And the pastor from Craighead resigned, married a girl in another denomination, and then had to go work in the other denomination. And each Sunday morning, I had to walk from Spaulding's to Craighead and walk back from Craighead to Spaulding's to have the Christian Endeavor at 6 o'clock on the night service. And then I was transferred from there. To I didn't even know they were going to transfer me, my brothers. They said, I must come to Golden Spring, but I must carry some clothes. And when I Came, went to Golden Spring the Thursday and the Saturday I heard that I must go to Mount Prospect. I don't even know where Mount Prospect was. Yeah. So when I reached to Mount here, you know, and I saw a little church on the hill and I am glad that I reached. I saw a young miss coming down that I knew used to be working for my pastor in Yorktown, so she knew me. 
And she said, that's enough for we church. <laughs> that's enough for we church. Come, let me show you which part for we church there. Had not been for her, I wouldn't know Mount Prospect Church because it's not on the main road. You have to come off on a side road and go around before the new way of the church, and you see the church. You see, God is always at work. We might not see it at the moment, but when we sit back to reflect on what God has done, he is the all-wise God. And pastors, let me put it this way. Some of you might be in a difficult position. Our oh, God ask of you is faithfulness. Nothing else. Be thou faithful. I will build the work. I will do the rest. All I will need you to do. Be faithful. So after a couple of years... They sent me to St. John's Road. We had no church. We had no land. We had 10 people. Eight of them were old women. One middle-aged woman and one teenage girl. That's what I was sent to minister unto. But today, you know St. John's Road. Hmm? I had no church. Nothing at all. But today, we have land, we have church. I stand before you to tell you that every black that is put into that church was built on that compound with my own hands. And I am saying to you, God have new fields of service for the United Brethren in Christ Church. We can't be stagnant. We can't sit down like we have achieved everything already. There is much work to be done. You say I go to a church with eight old women. Eight old women. One teenage girl and one middle-aged girl in our early 20s. God can use you where you are if you make yourself available. It is not about conference Sunday. It is about faithfulness wherever God blesses you. Thank you. God bless you all. Wonderful, wonderful testimonies of the faithfulness of God. And we want to give God thanks for Sister Roach. And we want to give God thanks for you, Reverend Green, and for how the Lord has used you to enrich the church. And today you are able to stand before us as a testimony. Can we praise God, a faithful God, faithful God. At this time, we are going to give, give bountifully to the Lord. Amen. And so at this time, I'm going to invite the praise team to come and they will minister and the ushers will wait on you for your offering as you give unto the Lord your very best. God bless you.
Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Giving time is a good time. Amen. Amen. You don't sound like you love giving. It said giving time is a happy time. Hallelujah. Do you know that the best gift that you give is what you give unto God? Because you see, when it comes back to us, it is in full measure. It is pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And we like mm. enough things, not you. Yeah. Hallelujah. So dig deep and get your offerings out. Hallelujah. We 
themselves and they have given to the, to the church of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord God, that you will open your doors and let their barns never run empty. Their cupboards will not run dry. Their wallets will not go. They will not go in want, Lord. We will always have because you are our provider in due season. Thank you for the men that have collected. We pray, God, that the monies that we have gathered will be used according to your purpose and your ministry. Give wisdom to those that will spend it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much uh, Reverend Blake and the praise team. Um, thank you for blessing the offering for us. I want to also invite you, my beloved brethren, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Church of the United Brethren in Christ, Jamaica, YouTube channel. Amen? And so it's a promise. I can, um, I can guarantee that you will all make effort to subscribe. At this time, we are going to have a selection from our junior uh, solo Youth Rally 2024 Junior Solo winner. Um, we welcome at this time Esan Swaby, who will come and minister.
morning, church.
say the name, the exalted name, the glorious name, powerful name, the name of Jesus. Somebody give glory to God. Somebody worship him. Exalt him in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Come on and give God praise for Essan Swaby. God has used this young lady for his glory. Give God praise. Hallelujah. What a lovely name. Glorious name of Jesus. It is time for us to focus on listening to God's word. His word that will come through his manservant. And at this time, I'm going to invite to come and do the introduction of the speaker. I'm going to invite our own beloved sister, Judian Kinghorn, and she will come at this time and introduce our speaker for us. And after introduction, we will have ministry, ministry coming from the Salem youth group. And then the next voice you will hear is that of God's chosen servant. Somebody praise his name. Praise God. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I greet our presiding bishop, Bishop Darren Larmont, our assistant bishop and chairman, our superintendents, pastors, delegates, members of the wider congregation. Mine is a pleasure this morning, and indeed the honor, to introduce the main speaker for this, the 73rd Annual Conference of the Church of the United Brethren in Christ. Bishop Winston Smith has served the Church of the United Brethren faithfully for over 45 years. <laughs> Winston Smith, a humble man, hails from Gimibibit, Clarendon. The Lord had his hand upon his life from a very early age. He answered the call and enrolled as a student at the Jamaica Bible College, as it then was, Norwegian College of the Caribbean, at the age of 20. Upon completing his course of study, his first pastorate was Malvern St. Elizabeth. This proved to be a rewarding ministry as he grew in the world, but he also met his wife in Malvern. He continued from this pastorate and has served throughout the conference since 1979 and continues to serve today. We would indeed struggle to search and to find any church that our Bishop Winston Smith has not ministered at. He served at the high office of Bishop and we thank him for his faithful service and dedication. He would not stop there. Bishop Smith matriculated as an undergraduate at the Huntington College in 1993, and he continues to serve in the conference. He has been married to his queen, Sister Janet Smith, for 42 years. Their marriage has been and continues to be a testimony of what a loving and committed marriage should be and indeed serves as a fine example to many. The couple has produced the two beautiful girls and one son. They boast and enjoy three grandchildren. His ministry continues as he serves in the congregations at Mount Zion, Carpenter's Memorial in Golden Spring, and the Hope Church in St. Catherine. I introduce to you my pastor, Bishop Winston Smith. We look forward to the anointing word that the Lord will use him to deliver. Amen. Amen. And 
consistent. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Julian, for a warm introduction. Amen. And you know, we are focusing on prayer and fasting, a call to prayer and fasting. And we are going to ask Rev. Martin to come and pray a prayer for Bishop before the group comes to sing. Let us bow our hearts as we pray. Gracious, eternal God, we honor you. We exalt you. We lift you up. We crown you with majesty and might and power and riches and splendor and glory ascribed to you. We thank you, mighty God, for your son, your servant, that you have chosen to use this moment. I pray for such anointing, such your destroying anointing will rest upon your servant. And as he speak, he will speak as the oracle of God. Declare the mind and the will of God in this house. That transformation will be experienced and name be glorified. We wait in expectancy to hear from heaven. Do it to him and in him now. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord. Mic check. Bless God. Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful, wonderful privilege to be in the house of the Lord this morning. This morning, we raise our hearts and our hands to the master builder, and we put our, ourselves and our lives in his hand. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Shattered, you're all broken inside. You don't have to stay 
there is joy. Good morning, everyone. It's indeed a privilege to be joined together with God's wonderful family. I begin by greeting our presiding bishop, Reverend Darren Lamond, Assistant Bishop, Reverend Dr. Brian Wallace, our former bishop, Reverend Isaac Nugent, our reverends, uh, Reverend Barrington Johnson, Reverend Kerry Harrison, and of course, you will hear later on our new um, superintendent for the Eastern District, Reverend Courtney Morgan. All of our pastors and their spouses, for you wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you in the powerful, magnificent, munificent, mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I wondered why I was chosen to speak, and I am the shortest of all of the men. <laughs> and I can't see very far, but I'm not a Pharisee. But thank God for the, the confidence that they have in God's ability in my life. And today I humbly come before you, and I must tell you, I have a wonderful wife. Please forgive me. Today I want to speak on the topic, a call for reinforcement. A call for reinforcement. 
the word reinforcement means the action or process of strengthening or sending additional assistance. In the case of zone of operations, a special operation, ZOSO, or state of emergency, SOE, the army and the police force are called upon to help stem the rise of crime and violence in the society. In some cases, especially when the situation is extremely bad, extra personnel are sent to increase the strength of the security forces. The initial force would hold their position until reinforcements arrived. In our text, the call for spiritual reinforcement in the form of prayer and fasting was clear. According to our text, there was a resistant condition that needed more than faith. It needed faith plus prayer and fasting. Because of the importance of this um, important event, we find that this incident is recorded in our text in Matthew's Gospel chapter 17 from verse 14 through 21. In Mark chapter 9 from verse 14 through 29 and also in St. Luke's Gospel chapter 9 from verse 37 to 43. The story begins with Jesus and three disciples, Peter, James, and John, descent from the Mount of Transfiguration, according to verses 1 through 13 of Matthew 17. Jesus was greeted by a crowd which gathered and the people arguing about the disciples' inability to heal a boy who was epileptic and demon-possessed. The father of the child had taken him to the disciples, but they were helpless. They couldn't do anything to relieve the boy's condition. It was then that the heartbroken, pensive, sad, desperate father sought assistance from Jesus. This poor man's situation was so hopeless as it were, that he was very persistent, so he came kneeling before Jesus. Notice, if you please, a sense of misery and crisis will bring people to their knees in deep contrition. Those who see their need for help will be earnest in their supplication to Jesus. Let us know two things about the father. First of all, the father's complaint. The father complained about the distress of the child. In verses 15 and 16 of our text, and over there in Luke and also in Mark, we noted that he, this child was, sorry, he was only a child. The sickness aggravated by a, a demon had been with him from infancy. The father was now quite depressed and he, and he was tired of watching his child suffer with no help inside. Can anyone here identify with such a situation? Have you had a situation in your life in your family, in your community, in Jamaica, all of us, where we have come to a place of resignation, recognizing that without Christ, we will continue to have a heartbroken situation. Without him, we will remain hopelessly lost. But when we come to our wit's end, we know whom we can go to. We know who is available. We know who is the constant figure 
and person in all of life uh, calamities and crises. We know we have one who is greater than our problems. The one who is higher than I. The one who says, when your heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Speaking of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the disciples couldn't heal the boy. He didn't have much faith that Jesus could do any better. So in Mark chapter 9, 22, he came to Jesus and he said, if you can do anything. And I want us to think, um, you know, very quickly. That you and I, um, that people are expecting that God has empowered us. And God has endowed us with that mighty power from on high. But we are impotent. Jesus. Let me move on before I waste the time. Let's think of the nature of the child's disease. The scripture says the boy was a lunatic. What does that mean? It means that the child had a mental illness. Which lies in the brain. And would occur when the moon changes. In other words, the boy was moonstruck. The effects of the disease were deplorable. He often fell into the fire and into the water. According to Matthew 17, 15, Mark 9, 18, and Luke 9, 39. The spirit would seize him and throw him violently to the ground. He would foam at the mouth, grind the teeth, and he would become rigid. Luke adds that these seizures made him scream. He said, look, it batters him and hardly ever leaves him alone. So, constantly, this demonic spirit, which aggravated epilepsy, never left him with the desire to, to destroy him. The desire to see him giving up the ghost. The desire to make the father live in misery. Torment. Facing trials and troubles day out, day in. If you are a parent and you have a situation like this father had, I'm sure you would certainly be depressed. You'll be so distressed. You'll be so distraught. You will feel like God doesn't exist. I want to say this. The boy was in bad shape. Yes, he was being tormented. He was being destroyed. The devil caused the situation or at least worked with the sickness to heighten and aggravate it. You understand that? Sometimes there are some very simple situations that are there initially and then the devil capitalizes on it. Amen? Right. So the child had epilepsy. We call it fits, no sir? And the hand of Satan was in it. He tormented him, thus making it worse than it ordinarily was. Think about Christ and how he chided the disciples. Verse 17. He chided the nine disciples for their failure to heal the boy. Hmm? Christ had given the disciples power and authority to do extraordinary things. In, Mark, in Matthew chapter 10 verses 1, 7 and 8 I read. And he called to him his 12 disciples and he gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction and proclaim as you go he says to them the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick raise the dead and cleanse lepers cast out demons Matthew Matthew in chapter 3, 13 through 15, chapter 6, 6 to 7, Luke 10, 19, would tell you all of that too. Amen? That Jesus had given us authority 
to step on the head of scorpions. Jesus, God help us. The disciples were successful before this incident. According to Luke chapter 10, 17 through 19. And I read, the 72 returned with joy saying, listen to them. Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Yet, at this time, they failed in their operations. Though there were nine of them together. In front of a great multitude. Now can you imagine the embarrassment? Can you imagine the criticism on Christians? The disciples who had done it before, Brother Danny? No, they can't do nothing about the situation. Come on church, are you with me? Yes. Hallelujah! And there are times, brethren, when you and I find ourselves impotent. We see the situation, the desperate situation, and all we do is pray and nothing is happening. Aren't you tired? Aren't you frustrated? Aren't you distraught? An opportunity to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. What a glorious opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus for the multitude, the crowd, to know here lies power. Power resides in God Almighty. And we have been endowed with power from on high. Three things he chided them for. Firstly, his presence with them so long. Verse 17. This has to do with the lack of maturity. Failure to act independently of Jesus' presence. Are you there, church? Yes. Amen. As long as Jesus was in their presence, they didn't have to do much. They, all they had to do is to learn. Watch Jesus perform the miracles and the many feats. Now, Jesus is saying, shortly, I'm going to leave you. And I want to see some evidence that when I'm gone, my legacy will continue to be an inspiration. They had seen enough of Jesus' progress. Healing the sick. Raising the dead, <laughs> feeding thousands, exorcising demons, and I could go on, yet they failed to act without him. Remember, no, he was up on the mountain, and nine of them were down in the bottom, and the man approached them. They could do nothing about his son's condition. Then let's move on. Look at his patience with them so long. How long shall I put up with you? Come on, man. You see that? How long must I put up with you? It's time you grow up. It's time you take on responsibility. It's time you take initiative. It's time you become a visionary. How long are you going to have me around? Amen. Amen. They enjoy means of grace and the spectatorship. But now they have, there's a great, great grief to the Lord. Jesus was frustrated, disappointed with the disciples. Inability to heal the boy. Amen. And to bring some comfort to his father. So think with me brethren. So many of us are members of the church of the United Brethren in Christ. So many are members of our local church. But how many of us 
are actively involved in ministry? How many of us are seeing the hand of God working through you, through working through me? How many of us are going through the motions? How many of us are leaders, leaders, and we are voted for every year, and there is no great thing happening in our lives? Jesus would soon leave them to take on the ministry and to carry it on. Amen, church? Can I say this quickly? It's not in my text, but it just come. Younger ones, I am getting older. Some of us are, we are in the water room. I don't mean dying yet, you know, please. I'm not going to live long. Never mind. <laughs> you know what I mean. We are in our 60s, in our 70s, and we soon say bye to this ministry. Amen, church? We need to see some gigantic hurt. Lucas, men of God, women of God, get up, rise up, stand up for Jesus. <laughs> but move on. Their faithlessness. Verse 17. How much faith, brethren, do you need to move a mountain? Hmm? How much faith do you need to have to heal the sick or the, to cast demons into the sea? And how can we find that faith so that we can experience the power of God in our lives? Jesus answered the disciples' question and said to them, Oh, faithless and perverse generation verse 17 he said to them because of your little faith your unbelief you for truly i say to you if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed you will say to this mountain move from here move from there move from here Jesus. And it will what? Move. And look up, look here. And nothing, say it with me, church. Nothing shall be impossible with God. For with God, all things are possible. Are we running? Are we going in hiding? Are we resigning? Are we giving up? Because there is a monster. There is a hard situation. It seems like the harder we try, is the worse it becomes. Brethren, <coughs> please forgive me. It is possible that after the disciples' early exploits, they began to see healing and casting out of demons as a technique, a mechanical ministry, and not a spiritual warfare. You ever see some pastors and strident about their arrogance in ministry? How they are doing well? And you need to learn a few things from me. Like I have everything. None of us. None of us has anything but that which God gives us. 
in humility, in brokenness, in contriteness, we bow before God. They knew the technique, and it is possible that they were trying to cast out the demons in their strength rather than seeking the Lord for his strength, and this they could not do. According to John 15, 5, without me, Jesus says, you can do what? Nothing. But with him, all things are possible. Amen, church. So what happened? I'm on no run from nothing. I may be shot in statue, but that no bother me. Amen, church. Because I know who is my Lord. I know who is my God. I know where my power comes from. And so do you. It is possible that the disciples met a spirit more stubborn and resistant than they had in the past. And so be became discouraged and gave up rather than continuing exercising their authority. You ever go to a church and have a situation and when you think a members and pass are the problem, you and I are fighting the wrong enemy. I have to move on. To encourage and exorcise, de sorry, to engage and exorcise demons, there must be complete trust in the Lord who has supreme supernatural power over every disease, every demon, every crisis, every dilemma, and I could go on. Amen, church? Some situations require dynamic, mountain-moving faith. Can I say that again? There are some situations that require what? Dynamic, mountain-moving faith. Amen, church? Amen. So look at it now. Jesus, Jesus did something for the boy and the father. Jesus cured the boy. He said, bring him here to me. Verse 17. Now, though the people were perverse and Christ was provoked, <laughs> yet care was given of the child. Notice what Christ did to bring about the cure. First of all, he breaks the power of Satan. You see verse 18? Amen, church. Mark 9, verse 25. He rebuked the demon as one having authority. In other words, Jesus would not allow this demon to continue his everlasting work in the life of this young boy. In other words, Jesus is saying, you have had a field day. Enough is enough. It stops right here. You see, we have got to be militant. Yes. We can't be soft, soppy, 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 soppy. You see, I don't believe that there is no United Brethren minister who does not believe that there are demons out there. No, I mean, I say it again, I move. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I beg your pardon. He had the authority, Jesus. He could back up his, the fierce situation with his word of command. In other words, he's not saying, when you don't move, when, when, when you don't evacuate. <laughs> hey, Jesus. You said Jesus had no friendship with the demons of hell. Amen, church. Because he destroyed the powers of darkness. 
Amen. He came into the world to deliver us from the power of Satan. So he has no alliance with Satan. So you and I mustn't skin up with him. You and I mustn't try to kind of put up a white flag to say we surrender. No retreat. No retreat. No retracing of our steps. When we stand up, we stand up totally. We stand up as militant force against the wicked works of the evil one. For too long, I want to suggest humbly, we allow the demons to exercise their authority in the church. For too long, we allow a little few persons in there to um, break it up and mash it up and divide it up. But in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you for praying for me. His possession has been ever so long. That's the demons. But you know what Paul says in Colossians 2, 15? That Jesus Christ, he has spoiled principalities and powers and make an open display and triumph over them. Come on, church. Amen, church. Amen, church. So, so when we sing, sorry if I move away a little from the mic. No, no, no. Mic. <laughs> but look, look at this. We sing some songs in our brethren. Amen. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Who is under my feet? Brother, sister, so and so. Pastor, so and so. Brethren, Satan. Amen. Satan is under our feet. Because Jesus has given it and power. So Jesus breaks the power of Satan. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He breaks every chain. Satan is like a roaring lion. But he is the king of kings, lord of lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. The second thing that Jesus did here, not only did he break the power of Satan, he redresses the grievance of the father. The child was cured. From that very moment. Instantaneously. Are you with me church? Not trying to fight out no demon. You just give a word of command. And the demon had to obey. We sometimes a fight. A fight. We say we are cast out demon. And sometimes unfortunately. The demon turn back. And knock out somebody. Anyway, let's move on. It was, <laughs> it was an immediate, perfect cure. No residual effect. Are you with me, church? Not a trace of demonic possession was left in that boy. Amen, church. Amen, church. In Africa, do not mopping up. No. One time. You know, you know, we have a little thing in, in a dance hall. A one what? A one what? A, no one drop, man. A, a one done in a dis -a dance or something like that. A one done rule. One done rule. Almighty God. The all-powerful God. The all-conquering God. The invincible God. The unsearchable, unsearchable God. <laughs> Time I run away from you. There was no point in blaming the boy, his father, or the demon, as the fault lay with the disciples. 
And when the people of God are confronted with abnormal conditions and circumstances that seem ineffective, they should check their faith. Humble themselves before the Lord. Jesus Christ and what? Beg to be informed whether some hindrance they face have been because of their own spiritual weakness which result in the unfruitfulness of their labor. Are you there? You're very quiet now. And that is good. Introspection is always good. Could it be because of my inability to see things happening in the churches that God has blessed me with is up because of me? Me are the problem? Because there is a sin or sins in my life that I'm harboring and not dealing with drastically? As the Bible says, if my eye offends me, I must pluck it out. And I so really mean literally, right? And if my hand is troubling things, I must chop it off. Yes. Amen, church. In other words, when you know your sin, deal with it drastically. Yes. Don't wait. Don't harbor it. So if I'm a pastor, my church not going anywhere. You think I'm going to blame any member? You think I'm going to blame anybody in the past? Me! Take it up. Say, Lord, you brought me here. You carried me here. You assigned me through God's servants. God Almighty. Search my heart, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> the faith we must have has more to do with what kind than how much. Faith in God is the instrument which enables man to remove, to pulverize, to uproot mountains of difficulties. Amen, church? Amen, Amen church? Amen. Difficulties which block our path. Amen? So long, instead of my church or our church inclining, sometimes it's plateauing. Sometimes it is what? Declining. Amen, church. Who can be happy with a plateauing church or a, in, a declining church? We want an inclining church. For Satan, you know, the church is moving on. Satan, you want to know, the church is moving on. Satan, you want to know, Church of the United Brethren in Christ is moving on. And no devil, no demon can stand in the way of the church of the United Brethren in Christ. So I am going to finish off now, ready? Jesus pointed out that there is need for reinforcement. In answering the disciples' question, Jesus told them they not only failed to help the sick boy because of their unbelief, but also because of their need to fast and pray. Yeah. Hear that, Reggie? He said, this kind. What is this phrase referring to? Let me suggest humbly. It could mean unbelief. It could mean that Jesus was referring to their unbelief. When he said, oh, faithless. Are you with me, church? Come on, come on with me now. If it is a reference to unbelief, then Jesus was instructing them to pray and fast till they drive out unbelief out of their system, out of their spirit, and engage in the spiritual discipline of prayer and fasting until the mountain disappears. Amen, church? Tell the truth, man. You see, you see in verse 18 of our text, if you look at it carefully, um, uh, you will notice, um, and especially in Mark's gospel, chapter 9, from verse 22 to 24, you notice that the father came to Jesus after he had approached the disciples. And they couldn't do anything about the situation. And the man said, if you can, and Jesus, I'm not talking to you now. 
if you can. Well, you can not blame him, don't it? Because if he came to the church and the church can't do nothing. I'm right. using the disciples as the church, you know, you know what I mean, right? Amen? If us as pastors can't do nothing, we have to go look out. Can be. The church has the answer. Church has the solution. Amen, church. So this kind of referring to here, as I'm thinking of unbelief here, it is brothers and sisters. Notice Jesus didn't say something was wrong with their faith. Instead, he said they had too much unbelief. Is that possible? Well, go back to what I just said. When the father came to Jesus and he said, if you, Jesus said, it's not if I can, you know. Is if you can believe what? All things are possible. Then verse 23, the man says, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Are you there, church? In other words, I can say I have faith, but there is some taint of unbelief. I can make people believe I am a man of faith when deep down in my heart there is trepidation. Yeah, yeah. Amen? There is fear. Yeah. May I go on? May I take the church? But God know me I trembling on my boat. Yeah. Amen, church? Yeah. Because I don't know who I'm going to meet you now. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But we cannot mix faith with unbelief. Oh. Amen, church? Because if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, brethren, we can speak to our mountain situation and they will be demolished. <laughs> On the other hand, time running out. If the phrase means this kind is referring to the demon that possessed the boy, then the same reinforcement is required. Demons have varying degrees of strength and authority. Is that true? Ephesians 6, 12. You know it well, right? For we wrestle against bald head, Rastafarian, coolie man. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power and wickedness, spiritual wickedness in high places. So brethren, you and I will understand that there are varying degrees of demonic influence out there. This demon had a strong grip on the boy from childhood. On many occasions, he ex exercised power over him with the intention to kill him. You know what, Peter, what Jesus says in John 10, verse 10? The thief cometh not, but for to what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. Isn't that so? But the converse is true, not true. But Jesus said what? I am come! That you may have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. And when it was eventually cast out, it left him rigid, almost dead. And this epilepsy was demonic in nature, according to our text, verse 18. So there are different ranks of demon possession. And evidently, some are stronger, more stubborn, and resistant than others. Yes. Apparently, this demon was one of those kinds of demons. How about that? So prayer, as I close. Prayer is one of the highest privileges we have in the Christian life. Amen. And God delights in answering prayer. Amen, Amen church? Amen, Amen church? Amen. Ask! shall be given unto you. Seek, you shall find. Knock, the door will be opened. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who knocks, the door is open. Yeah. 
Prayer connects us to the source of power. Like a plug in an electrical outlet. Amen, church. It catapults us onto the frontier of the spirit life. Fasting, on the other hand, is an abstinence uh, 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 from food, abstinence rather, from food, solid or liquid, for a spiritual purpose that is not a hunger strike, nor is it for the purpose of dieting. So I don't fast because I want to lose weight. <laughs> According to Isaiah 58, there's a purpose. Amen? We fast for the glory of God. We fast that God's kingdom will continue to move forward. But most of us fast for ourselves. Not you. We got fasting because things bad. Things mash up. All right, moving on. Beloved, <laughs> the extraordinary power of Satan must not discourage our faith, but quicken us to greater in reinforcement of prayer and fasting. You know, we need backup. Backup. Amen. You ever, <laughs> you ever go on a mission and you want to go? But you carry a, an entourage. But you have to know the kind of entourage you carry, don't you? <laughs> now I'm going there, now I'm going there. Amen. <laughs> you see, Reggie? <laughs> you see, as a pastor, you have to know your people, you know? Yes. Are you with me, church? Because yes. we now just pick up anybody for a joy ride. Oh. All right, all right. <laughs> Prayer and fasting are the proper means of bringing down Satan's stronghold and power against us. Amen. Amen. And the reinforcement of divine power to our assistance. Amen. Fasting puts an edge to our prayer and a means of mortifying some corrupt habits and disposing the body to serve the soul in prayer. Virgin, you know, like me, me love to eat. You know them where they? Mm -hmm. You know innocent. Amen? But you see, brethren, see the theme? Call to prayer and fasting. How many of us are doing that today? Think about it. Not to, not to make you feel bad, but think about it. Jesus seems to make... The assumption, brethren, as I close, that Christians will pray and fast. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 and verse 16, he says, but when you pray. Are you with me? When you pray, enter into your closet. Slam the door. Lock out distractions, detractors. Some of us can't do without the music. Anyway, that's not my message. When you fast. And he taught them the right way. It's not to make your face look ugly. It's not to make you look like you're dead for hunger. I love your face fix up. Importunate prayer is what God desires. In James chapter 5 and verse 17, the word of God says, Elijah was a man with like passion as we are. We put him on a pedestal, don't we? He's way up there because he was taken up in a chariot and never died, right? But the Bible says he was a human like you and like me. Yeah. Amen. And he prayed that it would not rain. And it did not rain for three and a half years. Yeah. Are you there, church? Yeah. And then he turned it back after the three and a half years and he prayed, prayed again and brethren rain drop. So he says what? The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed what? Much. The prayer meetings where we have a church. Combine all of the prayer fasting we have a church. Who are going? Who are home? Me blame myself. Me not blame nobody else. Who are going? We could have many of them every day. 
every night and things get worse instead of they get better. Where is the problem? Let's get to it, brothers and sisters, that we have to believe when we pray, we must add prayer, fasting to our belief and watch God move. Watch God do a mighty work in the local church and in the church of the united brethren in Christ. Three takeaways I give you. One, we are not to be intimidated by the strongholds of Satan. Can I say that again? Don't make no doppy fool you. Don't let demon frighten you. Amen, church? And don't retreat. Don't retrace your step. Body have to go retreat. It must be the devil and his cohorts. Amen, church? It mustn't be the church of hold up. Church can't lock down. Any place for lock down a rum bar? All right, move on, move on, move on. And secondly, <laughs> we should exercise faith at all times. Amen, church? You see my eyes here? You can't see them. They're very big. So that's why you can't see them. But you know, nearly five years ago, hallelujah, hallelujah, almost five years ago, I said, me can be a preacher of faith and miracles and me I wear glasses 20 odd years. Me I flick you away. See my wife over there, she can't tell if I truth or not. So. Throw it away. Never to come back on these eyes, over with these eyes and this face. Are you with me, church? See me can't read, don't it? Me not, me not struggle to read. Me, me struggle. Healer! No doubt. And all when he challenged me sometimes to read the finer prints, I said, Satan, get thee behind me. Me heal long time ago. <laughs> Amen, church. And you know me and some one time, don't it? And all of these things that came up on my face. Are you with me? And me tell God, say, you must know what you do. Come here, stand before people. Amen, church. Amen, church. Put it to God, go to the doctor, and the doctor help me, and my face will come on pretty good. Thank the Lord. Faith at all times. And finally, we must strengthen our faith with the spiritual discipline of prayer and fasting. God has great plans for the church of the United Brethren in Christ. Will you not join our dear bishop, Reverend Darren Lawman? Would you and I not join our superintendents? And whoever will be assigned to you as your pastor, may I beg you know, do not give them the cold shoulder. Please, in the name of Jesus, would you not work with them? Flaws and all becoming not perfect. Amen, church. Forgive us where we sinned against you. Forgive us. But work with us. Come alongside us. Partner with us. Come on. Brothers and sisters, make we march down Satan. Kingdom in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. God thanks for a very appropriate and powerful word today from his servant Bishop Smith. I want you to put your hands together for him and give God thanks. Hallelujah. And what a great reminder that we have that the Lord God has not left his church impotent. There is no powerless church because we have the power of the Almighty God. 
But I believe that it really pains the heart of Jesus when he delegates such power to us and he recognizes that we are not using it because we are not at the place to use it for his glory. I want us to know today that we can do all that God wants us to do and accomplish all he wants us to accomplish. We have to respond to this word. And so I invite you to stand with me, you know, as we ask the Holy Spirit to fall afresh on us once more. Ask him to break, to melt, to mold. Ask him as we sing this song as a prayer, a prayer before him. And even as we reflect on this message that the Lord has sent to us, let us not think about others. It's a word for us individually. Think about yourself. And think about what the Lord is saying to you. Do we have mountains in our lives that God has already delegated the authority to us for us to move these mountains? But we have them lingering in our lives. Not using the power that is available to us. Let us just reflect as we sing this song, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh as we raise our hands to him. Spirit of the, the living God, fall before your children we recognize the upsurge of principalities and powers acting against the will of God but we want to give you thanks Lord that you have equipped your children you said behold I give you power and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judah, in Samaria, and unto the utmost part of the earth. I pray for the full manifestation, O God, of this power upon the lives of your children individually and collectively. O God, that as we move back into our areas of ministry, we will walk with the authority walk in the power of the Holy Spirit of God that walls dividing walls will be broken down by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit sick bodies even in the congregation at this time must feel the power of the Holy Spirit every other power must become subjected to the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God Almighty 
God that will break every yoke from over the conference. Break the yokes from over the lives of your children. Destroy every bondage in the name of Jesus. Release the power. In the name of Jesus, we stand against stagnation now. We must go forward. Move forward under the anointing and the influence of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, break through the clutters. Standing before congregations. Standing before the Christian church. That the church will march forward in victory. Hear our cry, O oh God. Hear our cry. Let the power fall upon your children. Pentecostal power. Power to break chains. Release captives. In the name of Jesus. Oh, release your power. Release your power, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release your power. That Jesus might be glorified. That he might be exalted. Hallelujah. Let the Christian church praise the Lord. Let the Christian church give him glory. Give him all the honor. He's a mighty God. We worship you. We give you honor, Lord. We pray for those who are bound in sin. They may even be here today, but have never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. We pray, Almighty God, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will destroy vain philosophies, everything that is standing before the truth of the gospel, barring the minds of people from receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. We pray that the dunamis will be released oh God to release salvation and bring deliverance to every captive hear our cry oh God hear our cry today as we give you praise and glory and we give you thanks for your servant and for the powerful word that was delivered to us today we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lift holy hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him all the glory. Praise God. Praise God. I now invite Bishop Nugent and he will come with the communion. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Wallace. Assistant Bishop, what a wonderful word, what a wonderful feast around the table of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with believers, we glorify the Lord. And we're going to take that a step further as Jesus challenged his disciples that every time they eat the bread and drink the wine as he instituted they do it in remembrance of him and that's the time now as we fellowship around God's table with one another let me remind you or inform you that our pastors are really ready, well ready to, to serve us. And so I invite you to remain where you are because the pastors are going to come to you and uh, serve you. We are so organized that <coughs> we'll be having servers at different levels. And after we 
have served all of you, then the, the pastors and other workers will, as per usual, congregate and, and uh, the, the bishop, our chief minister, along with the superintendents and former bishops, will serve the pastors. And we bear in mind words of the Lord, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was bred. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. At this time, I'm going to invite Reverend Donald Dacus, if you would kindly come and lead us in the prayer of blessing and thanksgiving for this time of worship. Praise God. I also invite the praise team to stand by because as you know, you will be facilitating the singing as we serve today. Praise God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the setting has been made to come before you in reverence, in sing of our hearts, our consciousness, your death, burial, and resurrection. We bring in this congregation, but as we shall disperse to our several homes, we'll carry this label, this legacy of the great blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Donald Dacres. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and charity with your neighbors and are endeavoring to live the Christian life following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways. Let's draw near with faith as we take the holy sacrament to our comfort, a spiritual strength, and indeed for some physical healing. I invite the pastors to position themselves at the table and and you will be given the sacraments to serve in the different sections. The praise team is going to come and lead us in singing as we worship as long as it becomes necessary. Thank you. Praise God. this morning.
Do